Good uh, morning, everybody. My name is uh, Yossi, and uh, they say I'm a serial entrepreneur. What does it mean? And I have the pleasure of having, of interviewing Omri Kaspi. First of all, in order for you guys to get a feel about the the relative importance of each one of us, I ask uh, Omri to stand up. Okay, sure. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. As you will see, Omri may be tall, but he, he, he's, end, he, he's ending with a very good head that my role will be to drill uh, into. So Omri, you spent how many career, how many years you spent uh, playing basketball from uh, kindergarten, Gan Shoshana? <laughs> Very long time, I think almost over 25 years. 25 years, and yeah. you played in Israel and in the United States? Yeah, so I grew up in Yavne, which is a suburb of Tel Aviv, and uh, I turned professional when I was 17, uh, served in the Israeli military f for three years. I was a uh, sport time in Stan. Uh, a professional athlete at the time, and at the age of 21, kind of, kind of brainstorming with my agent and my family. Try to put microphone closer to mouth. Sure, so, sorry. Thank we you. get instruction from high above. You Thank know. you. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so at the age of 21, um, kind of consulting with the family, decided to, to declare to the NBA draft. Uh, we had a really good draft class at the time. Uh, Blake Griffin was our first pick. Uh, James Harden was third, Steph Curry was seventh, uh, Tyreek Evans, Ricky Rubio, Damar DeRozan, Drew Holiday, a lot of good players. So I was fortunate to get drafted at the 23rd pick uh, in 2009 draft um, and then played in the NBA for 10 years, five and a half years in Sacramento for the Warriors, all around the country. It was great. And then you retired. Yeah. And you pondered what are you going to do in your next incarnation? Yeah, I think... And you decide that you are not going to be a coach. Yeah. And you are not going to tie your uh, relation into sport, or maybe yes, I don't know, in investment. And you decided to embark on new career. Yeah. What is the new career you decided to embark on? Yeah, so I think it actually started even before I kind of decided to retire. Over the last five or six years, um, seen many of my colleagues and players in the NBA start to get into venture capital. And... Um, I followed kind of that model of the last couple of years investing and uh, obviously no, knowing that basketball won't last forever and, and you need to start planning ahead and what I want to do in life, in real life, you know, when, when, when you, you stop playing basketball. So uh, I co-founded uh, a venture capital fund with my partner, David. Uh, we're a $50 million early stage pre-seed, seed and a fund, uh, kind of focused on Israel, Israelis all around the world. Uh, we're not uh, sport, uh, tech focused, but obviously we're going to look at every deal and we love sports. So obviously it's something that is very close to our heart, but at the same time we, we invest quite uh, broadly across many sectors. And when did you establish the fund? How long ago? Yeah, so we started fundraising early in the year uh, and we, we just did our first close about 40 million uh, a couple weeks ago. Huh? Very nice. Congratulations. Thank Guys, you. Uh, at this stage in Israel, they used to applaud <laughs> just to give him a good feeling. You know. Thank you. And, uh, you know, you were an Israeli icon. You know, actually the poster boy of what, uh, what Israeli kid uh, aspire to be. And now you are going into an area full of all kinds of animals. And you are going to try and to compete with them, etc. cetera. What, what do you feel you bring from the sport area? What? What from the sport area uh, you, you are bringing to, to the VC world? I think uh, it's a good point. I think playing basketball in the NBA is, is pretty much the most competitive landscape in, 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 in our life. Um, and I think from a valuation of a company and, and a team, uh, kind of the chemistry, I've been the captain of the Israel national team for almost 15 years. Um, so kind of going through adversity and, and, and through ups and downs, even now there's some sort of a kind of crisis in the public market, right, which we're going to reflect into the private market as well. So 
assessing team, working together, going through adversity, um, which is something that's very similar to basketball. And I think the fact of the matter is when, when you see these values and, and what are you really looking for in entrepreneurs? So the humility and the, 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 the opportunity to work together and to collaborate on, on ideas and, and, and to go through that process together is something that's very similar to basketball. So from our perspective, we, we, we want to be very hands-on from the very beginning from um, essentially syndicating the round, helping fundraise, bring in strategic investors in the US and in Israel. There's great funds in Israel that we like to collaborate with. Uh, we invested in three, almost four companies now. Uh, we're closing our fourth. Everything is in stealth, so I can't, I can't uh, disclose them yet, but uh, really syndicate the round, bringing angels that can bring value and help you know, through our fundraising process and, 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 and business ideas and strategy, et cetera. So really help there. And, and over the years, thank God, I've, I've made a lot of good relationships in you know, you know, big companies and corporations to, to be design partners and, and later in you know, paying customers, et cetera. So really help on the business development side and, and really help. By the way, you know, as an, a good interviewer, I'm not supposed to share my views. I'm supposed Suppo supposed to get your ideas, but I'm a bad interviewer, so I will. <laughs> You're great. I want so to we'd make love to pick your brain. What do you think? <laughs> I will. I will make one comment, and really, honest to God, I'm not saying it to to please you. But uh, you know, I, I'm in the, this business since 1966, uh, 69. So I'm now doing high tech investment for 53 years, and. People may ask what is the logic of launching VC and the at the time of this kind of market. I tell you how I see it, honestly. I think that you were, your timing was perfect twice. Number one, when you raise the money, the valuation were, were high, so people tend to to invest, to, 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 to make investment in VC, et cetera. I think that if you would start your round today, you would face much more difficult thing. And number two, the valuations are going down, so you are now have possibility to do really good investments. I think, uh, I think this worked very well for you. And now, since I'm interviewer and I have to ask you a question, I will tell you, what do you think about this statement? I, <laughs> I think you're spot on. And, and I think if, if you look at it from, at least from our perspective in the early stage, the seed level side, we were looking at much longer cycles, right? So five to seven years before we can hopefully see exits or growth. Uh, so people tend to, to have more comfort level kind of investing in the early stage side of things. We, you can have a, maybe even a little bit bigger uh, kind of ownership into a company um, and optimize on, on, on customers and, and really business ideas, et cetera. You know, before we get on the stage, we conspire at the, the, the green room, at the, the room of the speakers, what questions and answers we are going to do to make it spontaneous. You know, spontaneous things are very good if you plan them carefully. And one of the issues we discussed, which I think is very interesting, what can you learn about founders and entrepreneurs in early stage that is similar or different from a basketball team. And uh, Omri came with some very interesting observations. Are you willing to share them? Sure. Yeah, you will. Uh, love I to know you are willing. This is why I'm asking <laughs> you. Sp spontaneous. Um, you like the spontaneous. I think the fact of the matter is, is, is when you assess a team and and you see the dynamics between usually two or three founders um, and kind of explaining their thesis and their market, who they are, what they've been, you know, their life, past experiences, et cetera. So and then you suddenly see the dynamics and I think it resembles a lot of sports. Uh, I've been through, you know, 10 years in the league and, and you see really talented team. Quite frankly, I've been in, in a couple of them that unfortunately uh, we, we didn't make the playoff, for instance. And one of the main reasons is is that unfortunately we didn't have an healthy locker room, right? And the culture of, a, of an organization and the leaders of the organization yeah. take a big, you know, so pl playing for the Warriors, seeing Steph Curry managing the Warriors and, and everything they've been, you know, been through throughout the years. 
you know, when I got into the NBA in 2009, the Sacramento Kings and the Warriors were pretty much at the same spot, kind of missing the playoffs a couple years. And now the Warriors are three-time NBA champions and hopefully going to the fourth. I think they will. But, um, and I think it's, it really, you, you can really tell by who Steph Curry is by being the best player in the team and, and the culture around the, com the team and, and companies in general, I think, really resemble. So when you see two founders or three founders uh, kind of sharing their you know, past experiences and, and how they work together and how they're willing to, how hard they really want it. You know, like, are you willing to stay up at night? I am. I know as a, as a VC, I'm staying up with my founders at 2 a.m. doing Zoom calls in the, with the U.S. with design partners because I think it, it brings different color to the conversation. So are you willing to do that? Are you willing to go the extra mile to, to be the best? And if you're willing to be the best, I'll be right there with you to support you throughout the process, and, and, and let's do it. Yeah, by the way, it's very interesting that you are mentioning or emphasizing the culture because from my experience, and I have experience, I think that I destroyed more companies in Israel than anybody else. You know, some tens of companies which I invested went nowhere and were evaporated, etc., and all kinds of awful things uh, happened to them. And I think before anything else, the culture of a company, which is actually the culture of a group of people, you know, at the end of the day, company is a group of people with office, with asset, but the, the backbone is the group of people determine the future and the destiny of the, <coughs> of the company. You mentioned when we spoke at the back room about the mental vis-a-vis -vis physical at the life of uh, accomplished uh, basketball player or athlete. If I try to say that the mental aspect in a startup is the no, the physical aspect in, in the startup is their knowledge and the mental is their resolve and their passion and they are willing to throw themselves, as we say in Israel, on the bob wire. What, what percentage you will uh, attribute to each one of the two in the success of a company? I think when you look at basketball players, the, uh, there's a triangle. Yeah, obviously, the basketball part of it is, is one angle of it. Uh, the physical aspect of it is the other angle, but the basis of everything is the mental. Uh, you can be the best basketball player in the world, but if your head is not in the right spot, and then unfortunately, you won't play good at the game. Um, which, again, I see a lot of similarities to, to tech and founders. Um, you can even go a little bit further back that, you know, when, when you see an NBA player, let's take Steph Curry as an example, right? Come in, coming into the NBA or going through college and high school and college and get into the NBA, you know, you're going through a lot. Um, you got to deal with different coaches and teammates and then you get to the league, the pressure goes up, you need to perform. Your seventh pick, everybody looking at you. Uh, I was with Steph at the pre-draft camp in Chicago in 2009 and people were screaming at his name, you know, walking down the streets of Chicago. So people knew who he was, right? So now the pressure goes up and in you know, early in his career, he had some injuries with his ankles, but then he became an all-star, and then he was the MVP and won an NBA championship. But every part of that, you know, career, kind of the, the pressure goes up. You, you got to, you know, now you have you set expectation at another level that you need to go out and, and achieve these kind of standards mm -hmm. again and again. And, and you also kind of expect that from yourself. You want to be the best, right? So if you want to be the best, you want an MVP, you got to win it again which kind of goes back to even Michael Jordan and, and his prime. But it, again, it, re it reminds me a lot of entrepreneurs. So they raise seed funding, so the pressure goes up, right? VCs are on the cap table. They're sitting at your board. You need to perform what the metrics are every quarter, every month, every couple of weeks. You need to update them. Investors, people put their hard-earned money into the company, so they're expecting results. They're expecting you to do stuff. Then you raise your A round, and it's a much bigger checks and more funds coming into the cap table and then you need more expectation and then you have you're getting married throughout the process you have kids and you, you got to deal with adversity so suddenly things not going as planned right so there's a uh, winter now so you got to plan for 36 months and 10 or 24 months or 18 months in the past you can't raise around every six months so what do you do then um and and you, you become you know 
a unicorn, right? And the pressure goes up. Investors want to get a multiple on their money, and they demand stuff from you. And so this is a constant kind of pressure, and entrepreneurs see that from a very from the very beginning. And if you want to be the best, you you got to perform, and you you know you. So that mental side of things, this is something that we we cherish very dearly, and I think we talk to our founders about it all the time, and and we share these experiences. We have a plan on going to the U.S. once a quarter with our founders and talk to LeBron and Steph and Tom Brady and uh, uh, and Serena Williams, for instance, to talk about that. How do you how do you deal with all that? How do you go through all this adversity and ups and downs, and and, and you you enjoy it sometimes too. So, um, you you know what you say make me think about something which I never thought, and I'm that serious of what I'm saying, that maybe it can be very effective at the early stages, at least at the early stages of a new startup, to have something which will be equivalent to coach of a team. Because when you build a startup, in parallel, you also build a team. And, some, and you leave it, you, you build a startup, you think about the technology, you think about many things, but nobody is taking care of building the team. So if the chief guy has a sense and natural talent, he will take care of it. But hundreds of startups are leaving it to the, to the luck or to the coincidence or whatever. So maybe had, heavy, uh, had the, uh, adding a coach and maybe the VC, if he's a qualified, can do it. Aiding a coach can resolve many issues in, uh, in the building of the team of a new startup and increase the ability to success and especially increase the ability to overcome diversities. Unfortunately, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we are standing between you and lunch, which is not a good position <laughs> where a speaker want to be. This is the second worst slot in a conference. The worst slot is the one after lunch, which we call the graveyard sold slot, where people are sitting and staring at you because they are afraid to close their eyes, but what they really want to do is to Take a little nap. fall asleep. You know, a few weeks ago, I spoke in that slot, and a guy in the first row fell asleep. So I asked the guy next to him, can you wake him up? So the guy looked at me and said, you made him sleep, you wake him up. <laughs> so unfortunately, this is really... This is really very interesting, at least for me. I'm sorry if you were bored, but really I got some new, new, new insight. I have to admit that I was interviewed on the TV, and they asked me what I think about Leo Messi. Honest to God, I asked them what is Leo Messi. They told me Leo Messi is a combination of Twitter and Instagram. I asked, where can I invest? And then they broadcast it to all the people in Israel, so which was very humiliating. But uh, Omri, thank you very much. You, I'm Omri. sure you are going to make a great VC, especially if you put the coaching. And I want to thank you for listening to us. And I think now lunch is being served. Thank you very much. <laughs>